we have evidence that climate change is indeed the religion of the American left, really the left all over the world. It's funny how Nancy Pelosi was quoting the Bible the other day in support of the Paris Climate Accord. She and all of her fellow travelers on the left would just as soon, though, go around the, the country suctioning little babies out of mommy's wombs and killing them. That's okay. But when it comes to climate uh, and and not going along with their particular view on it, all of a sudden they get religion. We have evidence of this. Yesterday, former Vice President Al Gore happened to be appearing, and he's gotten rich off of this climate change scam. He was appearing on Fox News Sunday with Chris Wallace, the first time he's been on that program. His first appearance on the Fox News channel since he was running for president 17 years ago. Thank God for small favors. That didn't happen. But this is evidence that climate change is indeed the religion of the left. Mother Nature is telling us every night on the TV news now is like a nature hike through the book of Revelation. People are noticing this, these downpours and historic floods. We've had 11 once in a thousand year downpours in the U.S. just in the last 10 years. Uh, we've got these wildfires that become megafires now. We've got a 70 percent of Florida's in drought today. Missouri declared a, 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 an emergency just a couple of days ago because of, no, of another one of these, and they keep on coming. But let me pick up on that because let's say the and I'm going to add it there. Chris Wallace, he picked up on it, but he didn't. You know, how do you know that we have more forest fires today, Mr. Gore, than we did 100 years ago, 200 years ago, 1,000 years ago, 10,000 years ago? And you speak of floods. Well, since you're speaking of the Bible, there was a flood described, a really big one in the Bible. Uh, how does it compare to that? Since, since you're going to bring religion into this, let's talk a little bit about how this works. And since you claim to be scientific and you claim science trumps the Bible, but now you're referencing the Bible. Let's let, let's bring that in here. Oh, about biblical proportions, I, I know that because my former wife, she told me that before I tried to hit on that woman in a hotel. We can get into that at another, another point. But then he went on, and Chris Wallace says to him, you know, Excuse me, sir, but with all due deference, you've been wrong with a lot of these predictions. In 2006, you made the following comments as part of your publicity for the, the movie. You said, unless we took, quote, drastic measures, the world would reach a point of no return within 10 years, and you called it a true planetary emergency. We're 11 years later. No. Weren't you wrong? Well, we have seen a, a decline in emissions for the first, on a global basis. For the first time, they've stabilized and started to decline. So some of the responses of the last 10 years have helped. But uh, unfortunately and regrettably, a lot of serious damage has been done. Greenland, for example, is losing one cubic kilometer of ice every single day. <laughs> I went down to Miami and saw fish from the ocean swimming in the streets on a sunny day. The same thing was true in Honolulu just two days ago, just from high tides because of the sea level rise now. We are going to suffer some of these consequences, but we can limit and avoid the most catastrophic consequences if we accelerate the pace of change that's now beginning. I went down to my Abbey and I saw fish swimming in the street. Then I went to Honolulu. I had to paddle all the way and it was really tiring because I wouldn't dare fly there. It would be too detrimental to the environment. So I got in the water in San Francisco Bay and I began paddling. And when I got to Hawaii, I saw fish swimming in the streets there. Now these fish are mutated because of the changes in climate. Now they're very large fish. They started to ride motorcycles and they are intimidating people around town. Some of them wear leather jackets and chaps and look a lot like Marlon Brando. And they go around town harassing people all over Honolulu and Miami. I barely made it back here, Chris, because it was a long swim halfway across the Pacific. And then when I got here, I had to walk across the country because I wouldn't dare drive an automobile because of the carbon footprint. And I finally made it to your studios, still soaking wet, even though I walked 3,300 miles to get here. Because it rained on my way in, and that rain was caused by human activity. It rained hard, and it never had rained hard before today around the planet. And that is because of human activity. 
Does this guy ever get tired of just spinning these yarns? The reason we have seen a decrease in overall, and he says, well, my predictions were wrong, of course, but that is because we did drop our carbon emissions. That happened because of growth, capitalist growth around the world. Even Chris Wallace, who's not always the quickest guy on his feet, he even interjected and pointed out that a lot of these changes have been made simply because they were good business. And we've come, and science has innovated. Capitalism led to that innovation. And we've had these changes, which is why we're seeing far, far again. Folks, it's the third world that's polluting because, again, they're cook fires. They're cooking their dung and all of the wood they have, chopping it down to feed themselves. If they had a, a, a first world economy, they wouldn't have to be doing that. Now, would they? We've got more on the way. Bill Colley with you, speaking of morons. Al Gore. Got more on the way. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. It's 940 and it's 56. Perhaps some of your telephone calls too, as well. On News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. 